Yeah, I'm Professor Niyazi Serdar Sarıçiftçi. I'm the director of the Linz Institute of Organic Solar Cells in Linz, Austria. And we are heavily involved in developing organic nanostructures and inorganic organic hybrid nanostructures for using in solar energy conversion into electricity. This is organic or hybrid photovoltaics or and we are aiming to utilize the solar energy to convert into chemical energy in artificial fuels. Organic solar cells we define as purely organic nanostructures and organic uh, carbon hydride based systems which are organized in a way that there is a photo effect in these materials. In an organic inorganic hybrid systems one of the components or more can be an inorganic nanostructure. An inorganic uh, semiconductor, quantum dots or quantum rods. There are even great effort to make nanotubes in several configurations available for photovoltaics. So these kind of approaches where the organic nanostructures and inorganic nanostructures are working together to make the solar energy conversion, we define as hybrid nanostructures, hybrid solar cells. As much as we can learn about the nanostructures and control of these nanostructures, the better will be the efficiencies of our solar energy conversions in future. One of the most important issues in organic photovoltaics is how to increase the conversion efficiency. The efficiencies today are on the 8% as reported by companies. However, to make it really economically attractive and viable, we have to go up to the levels of silicon photovoltaics, which is on the order of 20%. So this will be the biggest challenge to increase the efficiency of organic solar cells to 20%. And plus, in the second level, organic photovoltaic elements will be not as stable as the crystalline silicon photovoltaic panels. And to increase the stability to a level where the use of such panels will be not economically hampered. That means five plus years operational lifetime of such photovoltaic elements will be necessary to go into the application in large scale. Last but not least, the greatest attraction which we are aiming that the organic and hybrid photovoltaics will be cheap, much cheaper and much easier and the capital investment to produce much lower as compared to crystalline silicon solar cells. The break even for the solar and the wind energy conversions will be in the next decade. Nature, for one or the other reason, prefers not to convert the solar energy into electricity, but convert the solar energy into chemical energy. And we can learn from this actually one important message, that the chemical energy has a great advantage over other forms of energy because it can be stored and we know from oil and gas also it can be transported. The most intelligent and high density form of energy storage and transportable energy storage is the chemical energy. One liter of gasoline has orders of magnitude higher energy density than any equivalent battery 
we can imagine today. A hundred years ago, in this country, there was a great boom of utilization of solar heat for getting steam engines and pumps, as well as just water heating for the residential use. And this somehow get lost. And oil and fossil fuels were apparently much more dominant in the last uh, decades. So I believe it's coming back again and we will learn again how to use the solar energy in form of heat, in form of electricity, and hopefully also in future in form of converting to artificial fuels.